Mike, you had home runs there. Well, if we got home runs here, 8,344. The total homers hit by some of the greats of the game you're about to see. The bird who likes to straighten out the mound and have it his way. The bird. Gotta be the hottest thing in baseball since bat day. Well, we've got one of the thrilling moments in World Series history right here. Gibson has tied Kopech's strikeout record of 15. He's going for one more to break the record. Takes his set position. He delivers. Here's a pitch. Swing it out! sport thrives is nourished by its history some of the greatest players in the history of baseball are on the field for the upper deck classic that you're about to be part of there's going to be a little competition out there and you could wind up being a laughing stock by swinging and missing three times. And I'm capable of doing it. Well, I'm going to be thinking about trying to hit that building. I heard ain't nobody hit it yet. I'd definitely like to be the first to do so. Like, you know, I might hit the warehouse. No one's ever done that before. <laughs> <laughs> Let's play two today. And welcome back to a sun-drenched Orioles Park at Camden Yards, the Upper Deck Classic, the Heroes of Baseball Game, 1993. Hello, everybody. Gary Thorne and Dave Campbell, and we are delighted to have you with us as part of our coverage here in Baltimore of this All-Star Festival. David has always said this is one of his favorite games to broadcast. How come? I, I think for so many reasons, Gary, but, you know, baseball is the one sport, American sport, that transcends generations, and with the exception of the DH, there's been no major rule changes in the last 100 years, so fans can compare bygone eras. I mean, you don't need last names in this game. Just say the Babe, the Iron Horse, the Big Train, the Next Generation, the Splinter, Jolton Joe, the Mick. Say hey. And today, you got Junior, and you got Barry, and Cecil, and Cal, and Kirby. It's the one game where the fans can reflect, opinionate, and that really represents fan participation, which is the element of the game anyway. Dave Buck Martinez is joining us here in Baltimore today. He's going to have a great time down on the field. He'll have a chance to talk with some of those heroes of baseball. Thanks, Gary. Reggie, you hit a home run last year in this Classic, and you've hit a lot of home runs. They mean a lot to you. What did it mean to you last year you hit that Grand Slam? You know, Buck, it really was a thrill for me. You know, I think that I was so nervous about swinging, missing, or striking out. Everybody wants to see Reggie strike out. Their teammate, the players do. But I was really thrilled, and, and it's something I'll always remember. I know you're a big hero, a big fan of baseball. What about hitting it off of Gibson? Hey, Bobby Gibson, we were talking before the ball game and then during the game. You know, he has a reputation of knocking guys down and really being tough, but really the theme is for the guys to let the guys hit the ball and, and put on a good show, and he laid the ball in there for me. And then I, when I went around the base, I said, hey, big guy, I'm sorry. I, I didn't really mean it, but you know you threw it right there. <laughs> All right, Reggie, thanks a lot. Good luck today. Thanks, Buck. Thank you very much. There are a couple of Orioles who are back home. Jim Palmer is going to be pitching. Earl Weaver, his manager then, is going to be his manager here. And you're going to meet some Hall of Famers. ESPN's presentation of the Upper Deck Heroes of Baseball Classic is brought to you by Mobile Link Cellular Service. It's simply the way to communicate. And by Budweiser, the king of beers, who reminds you friends know when to say when. Eighteen players in the 1971 All-Star Game at Detroit's Tiger Stadium went on to become Hall of Famers. In this historic game, can you name the slugger who hit a home run off a light tower? And welcome back to Camden Yards, everybody. We're about to meet the Hall of Famers participating in the Upper Deck Heroes All-Star Classic. 
And the man who's going to be introducing them is going into the Hall of Fame this season as well. He's been with the Baltimore organization as a broadcaster for 45 years, Chuck Thompson. This man is Mr. Cub, and he'd like to play two today. His 512 home runs tie him for 12th best in history. Welcome, please, the incomparable Ernie Banks. This next star stole 118 bases in 1974. Still a National League record. A lifetime 293 hitter who played 19 years. Welcome, Lou Brock. What a pitcher was this next gentleman. He pitched 17 years, won 251 games, struck out over 3,000 batters, and completed 255 games in 482 starts, a seven-time All-Star, winner of nine gold gloves, welcome the outstanding Bob Gibson. Another outstanding hurler who won 20 or more games six straight years with the Chicago Cubs. He won 24 games and the Cy Young Award in 1971 during a 19-year career that included 284 wins. Welcome, one of those things, Fergie Jenkins. Picture this next gentleman's high leg kick, and you know right away who we mean. The ace of the San Francisco Giants and a 10-time All-Star. Welcome, Juan Marichal. Our next Hall of Famer won 314 games in a 22-year career. Only four pitchers in the history of baseball threw more innings than did this hurler. Welcome, Gaylord Perry. The next hurler is a former Oriole. But he gained his fame with the Phillies, for whom he won 20 more games every year from 1950 through 1955. Welcome, seven-time All-Star, Robin Roberts. The 10th-time All-Star played 19 years and hit exactly 300 lifetimes. His famous mad dash from first to score the winning run in the 1946 World Series is a classic moment in baseball's history. Welcome, please, Enos Slaughter. Our last Hall of Famer for the National League was a teammate of our first one. He hit 426 home runs, made the All-Star team six times, Welcome, please, Billy Williams. Everybody raise. Hey, hey, fuck. If these guys hit a baseball, they could hit no ball. Hey, they're talking about hitting a baseball. They could hit, huh? the members of the American League squad who have been elected to the Hall of Fame. And again, let's start with an Oriole. A nine-time Gold Glove winner, a ten-time All-Star, this wonderful shortstop helped lead the Orioles to their first world championship in 1966. Welcome back from Venezuela, little Louis, Luis Aparicio. Next, welcome one of baseball's all-time great heroes. He played in 14 World Series. Think about that. 14 World Series. A three-time most valuable player. A 15-time All-Star. 
Then he managed the Yankees and the Mets and put both in the World Series. Welcome, the one and only Yogi Berra. This nine-time All-Star was the hero of the Midsummer Classic in 1943, and his number one was retired by the Boston Red Sox. Welcome, Bobby Doerr. This six-time game, uh, this six-time 20-game winner led the league in strikeouts seven times. His fans called him Rapid Robert. Welcome, Bob Feller. Out there, out there next to you. This memorable ace of the Oakland A's was a seven-time All-Star, and while with the Brewers, was the American League's most valuable player and Cy Young winner in 1981. Welcome, Raleigh Fingers. This 14-time All-Star hit 563 home runs, the sixth best total in history. Now he is on the board of directors of the Upper Deck Company and an official with the Yankees. And we in Baltimore congratulate him for his well-deserved election to the Hall of Fame in his first year of eligibility. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Reggie Jackson. The next Hall of Famer is a Baltimorean, and all of us share the pride of his enormous success. From the sandlots of Southern High School, just an Al Kaline throw from here, this 16-time All-Star hit 399 home runs in 22 years with the Tigers. Welcome, Baltimore's own Al Kaline. Well, we who follow the Orioles saw this man club many a home run against us, and the other teams didn't fare any better. He hit 573 lifetime, fifth best in history. Welcome the slugger of the Minnesota Twins, who hit 40 or more home runs eight times. Ladies and gentlemen, Harmon Killebrew. This next gentleman was simply the greatest pitcher in Orioles history. A World Series shutout at age 20, an eight-time 20-game winner, a three-time Cy Young winner. We could talk about number 22's glorious career till the sun goes down. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Jim Palmer. is a man who has starred as a player, a coach, a manager, and now a front office official. He led the Orioles to four pennants in his six years with the Orioles and hit 586 home runs, the fourth greatest total in baseball history. Ladies and gentlemen, number 20, Frank Robinson. And finally, the greatest third baseman in the history of baseball. His 23 years included 16 gold gloves, 18 All-Star Games, MVP awards for the American League, the World Series, and the All-Star Game. There is no one like Baltimore's number five, Brooks Robinson.
And now, ladies and gentlemen, we will introduce the two managers of this game. First, a longtime Orioles rival who ranks 20th on the all-time Major League list with 1,352 wins. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Chuck Tanner. And now, the manager of the American League. The greatest manager in Orioles history, one of the greatest managers in baseball history. Welcome number four, Earl Weaver. And as the Hall of Famers came out, those players seated are some of the great players from the Negro Leagues being recognized during All-Star Weekend lineups are next. And what a beautiful gym this is. This is Orioles Park at Camden Yards, the 1993 All-Star City Baltimore, the last time they did it here, 1958. The Heroes game. They've got a big crowd on hand for it and could not have a finer day than this. The All-Stars, you're going to get to see enormous names and numbers. The National League starting lineup today, Chuck Tanner will be the skipper. Here's the team he's going to put out. The Hall of Famer, Lou Brock, will make the start in left field. Billy Williams, one of the game's greatest hitters from the Chicago Cubs, will be in right. Nobody ever hit the ball harder than Dick Allen. He's the designated hitter in today's game. Steve Garvey from that great Dodger infield and another MVP will be batting cleanup at first. The Cobra, who can still play, he may put one way out of this yard. Dave Parker will be in center field. Daryl Evans, one of the real stars of this game as far as power is concerned, will be at third base. He was traded for a manager. We'll tell you about that. His name is Manny Sanguian. He'll be doing the catching in today's game. Also part of a great infield in Los Angeles, Davey Lopes makes the start at second base. He has managed, played, and coached. Still in the game as a coach right now, Bobby Valentine will be the starting shortstop. And there are the skippers, Earl Weaver and Chuck oh, Tanner, who are going to get out there and just have a good time and argue at home plate before the game even starts. Oriole fans are in for a real treat. The guys who are about to come out of the dugout for the American League Heroes starters are all Baltimore Orioles. You know Earl wants to win this game. He's still smarting from Tanner beating him in the 79 World Series. This will be no nonsense for Earl today. He has not changed an iota from the days when he was doing this for real. He was as animated. Hey, Al! Let's go! Go get him! Go get him! Animated last night at the supper. All right, after Deck put on. And he's just as animated today. Yeah, just take turns. I'm going over to third for the first. Yeah. And obviously we have some mics on some of the guys that you'll be watching today, which will make this even more interesting. And Buck will be downstairs to catch the smiles and the handshakes and the hugs of the players. As this game goes along, we invite you to just sit back and enjoy this one, the Upper Deck Heroes All-Star Game. And Bob Feller is going to make the opening pitch of this game. Came into the Major Leagues at the age of 17. Well, Bob Feller will throw one pitch only, and then we'll have an all-Oriole team as Palmer will replace him. L. Rod Hendricks is doing the catching, the man who has spent more time in a Baltimore uniform than anybody in the history of the organization. The Booger. He is a legend here at first in Baltimore at first base, Booth Powell. Second base is Bobby Gritch, 200-plus home runs in his career, spent many years here in Baltimore. Doug DeSensei is going to play short. He took over for Brooks when Brooks Robinson retired, but Doug gets the call at short. And speaking of Brooks, what would an all-star game be in Baltimore without this man who played in 18 of them, Brooks Robinson? Al 
Cal Bumbry. First Oriole to ever have 200 hits will play left field. Eight gold gloves for the center fielder, Paul Blair. He used to play so shallow in center, they used to make him buy a box seat. And in right field, Reggie Jackson, newest inductee into the Hall of Fame. August 1st, ESPN will be covering that event. He is not wearing the Oriole uniform. I suspect if he would have, George would have thrown a tirade. <laughs> or at least taken the job away from him. <laughs> well, he we couldn't have had a nicer day for this Heroes Classic. And a great crowd on hand here at Camden Yards as Lou Brock will stand in to take the first pitch. And he's going to get his picture taken with Elrod Hendricks before he's able to get to the plate. These heroes, they've been passing the bats and the baseballs and the papers around and had the cameras too. They love to get each other's autographs to take home and along with the fans who've been able to catch up with them. Feller's ready to go. He will throw out the ceremonial first pitch. Bob Feller still travels around the nation and around the world in fact doing this very thing exhibit wise 17 years old when he broke into the major leagues a career that was disrupted by his service to his country Lou Brock fellas gonna stay out throw a couple Brock's gonna go to Powell <laughs> and the oogs are up here in Baltimore tough to figure out if they're yelling boog or boo but <laughs> boy boog step on it Feller's going, once again, I can't get any defensive support. Boog taking That's lessons from Dick Stewart, Dr. Strange Glove. And there goes Bob Feller as Jim Palmer heads out. So Bob Feller went against one batter, Earl Weaver, to meet him, and there is Jim Palmer. Yeah, Feller also filled Earl. That guy scores. It's an honor and run. <laughs> Jim Palmer, 200. 68 wins in his career, and he wows the fans here. He's thrown it up there about 82 miles an hour. Remember, he almost made a comeback a couple yeah, of years ago. That's right. He will face Billy Williams with Lou Brock on at first base. Billy Williams on the Chicago Cubs, one of the all-time great hitters. His number, along with Ernie Banks, flies at one of the flag poles at Wrigley Field. Ernie Banks also on hand as a coach here for the Upper Deck All-Star Game. Palmer still throwing that high fastball for a strike. Gets the call from the home plate umpire, Bob Rosner. Local umpires being used. That one driven pretty good. Blair. Oh, no. Blair got there. Reggie's going to have a word with him in the outfield. And Brock goes to second. Billy Williams to first. Only the St. Louis Cardinals, since they started the gold glove, have gotten more gold gloves than the Orioles. But Paul Blair drops one. Boog Powell drops one. Hey, guys, let the goat's head out of those gloves. Start grabbing them. Didn't see Paul Blair miss any in his formative days. Oh, hit him in a bad spot, right in the pocket. Reggie Jackson said last night, I'm going to be playing right, Paul. And that means Blair's going to be in center. Because I want someone who can get over and cover my territory as well as his. Allen. Souvenir back behind home plate. Dick Allen, a 292 career hitter. Seven times he batted over 300. Players still ooh and ah about this contact hitter. Gary, yeah, he struck out 150 times one year and still hit 315, which means he hit about 460 when he put the ball in play. Boy, is that typical? Look at that. Look where Blair had him played. Blair had moved way over into the gap. <laughs> Even in the Heroes game, they've got scouting reports. And Dick <laughs> Allen is retired. Blair was way over in the alley in left center field. Lou Brock on at second. Billy Williams on at first. Dick Allen in his Philadelphia uniform will head back. Palmer just bowed out to Blair, and Paul returned in guy. And now Garvey, who looks like he could still play easily. Steve Garvey, 1,207 consecutive games, a National League record. Bloops that one. The Sensei's. Oh! The Baltimore crowd wanted that more than any. Bumbry sends it back in, and the sacks are loaded. Well, that'll go as a base hit. Great effort by the Sensei. But no cigar, and the bases are loaded for Dave Parker. Earl's going, God, I've got a, I, I went and got a bunch of guys who can catch the ball. What an effort by DeSensei, but not there. And the sacks are jammed. Remember, we had a Grand Slam homer a year ago in this game by Reggie Jackson. And don't think Bob Gibson hadn't forgotten that. 
Yeah, you're right, Dave. And I'll tell you, talking about home runs, here's a guy who had certainly more than his share. Dave Cobra Parker getting the opportunity here for the Heroes against Jim Palmer. We saw earlier today Ken Griffey Jr. hit that warehouse outside the right field wall. Still nobody has done it during a regulation game. Guy at the plate right now wouldn't mind uh, putting one out there. He gave it a ride. Reggie in right. Will they tag Lou Brock at third? Yeah. Reggie, that's only two outs, Reggie. <laughs> Reggie, you, you forgot, Reg. It takes three outs, Reggie. But he would have scored anyway. Yeah, Matt, two outs now, Reggie. So the sacrifice fly and the RBI for Dave Parker. Lou Brock is home. Earl Weaver's upset. But he's got Jim Palmer on the mound. The second, McGregor the third, and you've got the rest, Raleigh. And we got to get Jim. Decided who's going to pitch where. Here's Darrell Evans, the third baseman. Two on. Darby at first, Billy Williams at third, two down. Jim Palmer missing down low. <laughs> Jimmy's saying, I know your glove's there somewhere. Henry, I just can't find it, Elrod. Is he throwing a sinker ball? I think he's out of gas. <laughs> he, he didn't have as many pancakes today as he usually does when he's going to start. Darrell Evans waiting on him. Elrod's got that goat head in his glove, too. Did they fill up those gloves with helium before the game today? Yeah, the guys are really worried about the East Coast weather here in Baltimore with over 100 degree temperatures last few days. But not bad here. Reggie, this will be for the third out. Warning track shot. Darrell Evans retired, but Earl Weaver finds himself down as the Nationals get a run in. We'll take a look at his lineup in a minute. Gibson, inducted 1987, 251 victories. Manny Sanguian will do the catching. He had a rocking chair up there, a stool to rest while he was warming up. Steve Garvey, some gold gloves at first base. Davey Lopes also won a gold glove when he played with the Dodgers. Bobby Valentine is the shortstop. Spent time with the Dodgers, Angels, Padres, and Mets. And at third is Darrell Evans. No gold gloves for Darrell, but he could pull. Hall of Framer Lou Brock in left. Dave Parker, who had the great throwing arm, is moved to center. Normally a right fielder by trade. And the right fielder trying to find some shade out there is Billy Williams. Now, Billy, there is no shade. No hiding today. What a sight here at Camden Yards. Bob Gibson making the start here for the Heroes will be facing Al Bumbry. Bumbry was the American League Rookie of the Year in 1973, a speedster. Played here for the Baltimore Orioles from 72, 1984 in the organization. Down to first, Steve Garvey. Sure, and he can still get down. Bumbry's retired. Bob Culler's going to be mad if this lead holds up. He get hooked with a loss to a ground ball and Booth kicked it and that run scored. Faced one batter and that's the one who scored. This Culler's still in the uh, in the dugout. You saw walking out of the screen there. Paul Blair. Should have known that Palmer wasn't going to throw a grand slam last inning. He went through his entire career without giving one up. That's why it would fit right in this game, wouldn't it? Paul Blair, outstanding defensive ball player. Six World Series, four World Championships, a couple with the Orioles. Gibson, who won some gold gloves in the mound. It's Blair. Bob had nine of them. Great fielding pitcher. Now's my moment. Remember, Reggie hit a grand slam against Gibby last year. I'm waiting to see what happens. You take a look at Reggie's uniform. Of course, he's working for the Yankees. They're being recognized more of the ball. All right. Player. And Gibson went after him and took him down. Gibby, do it again just so he'll know you meant it. <laughs> you think Reggie wants one out into that warehouse right now? Reggie was putting a few out in batting practice today here. The thing about these two guys, 
<laughs> They're smiling and laughing at one another. But let me tell you something. It's that close. That close. The competitive juices in these two players still flows mightily. I didn't see any smiles. No. 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 Call this a strike no matter where it is. All right? Okay. Call this a strike no matter where it is. This man has struck out 2,600 times, and he's begging for strikes. He's going to the mound. Oh, the other way. They had the big shift on, and Reggie took it the other way and hard. Brock gets it back in, and Reggie gets one off Gibson. <laughs> you got his number now, Reg. I think I'll play for All right. Not booze. Boog. Blue pal at first base. Sangi and skips by. Reggie will go to second. Looks like Jimmy tried to knock our, knock our cameraman down standing next to home plate there. A little scary out there. We got cameraman uh, working on the field about four feet away from the batter. Foul tip off the end of that bat could cost our cameraman dearly. There's the shot from right down, right outside the batter's box on the other side. The third. Evans, Darrell. And Gibby has a very successful inning. Gibson gives up just the one hit, the single by Jackson, who's stranded. And we've completed one here in our Upper Deck Heroes Classic with the National League on top, one to nothing. And as we said, down at dugout levels, Buck Martina. Did you expect Gibby to do that? Well, if you know Bob Gibson, you better be ready. Well, yeah, he got you to go to the other way, though. Kept you in the ballpark, huh? I'll take it. I'll take it. It's a good start, Red. Got to be nice to Mr. Gibson. You bet. <laughs> nice guy. I learned to hit with the broomstick and ball cap. That cap would spin and curve, and that made me a good hitter. <laughs> Ever since uh, 1974. American Express is welcomed at the Hall of Fame and a lot of other places that bring out the game. When he was introduced today, just an enormous hand. He is still one of the magic names in all of baseball. Maybe nobody ever got as much out of one year of professional baseball as that man, Mark the Bird Fidrick. 19 wins, led the American League in ERA, and yeah, Mark does talk to the baseball. He's putting plenty of hits. Follow through. That's all, just follow through. You go righty, righty. Come on, come on. Yo! Manny Sangian, he used to talk to the ball when he pitched for that great rookie season and a number of comeback seasons. I wish a player would make a great play behind him. You'd see him going all the way out to congratulate him. You ready? You gotta love it. He brought something real special to the game. Manny Sangian. First ball hitting. Sangian's got himself a base hit. Something new and different. Swinging at a bad pitch out of the strike zone for Manny Sangian. They throw it. I hit it. And Chuck Tanner, his manager, said last night he left him in one game in a playoff situation against the pitcher because the pitcher never threw strikes. And Tanner said, I left Sanguian in because he never hit strikes. There's Tanner. He was traded for Sanguian. He was a manager then. Oh, what a shot put out by Davey Lopes. Now Bumbry will get it back in. Well, Pedrich went right-hander, right-hander. Okay, now. now he's going to have to look to another right-hander as the baby bull comes up. Bobby Valentine was going to hit, but Orlando Cepeda says, look at the back of my jersey here. It's me. <laughs> so there's the announcement to be made as the baby bull will come up. Bobby Valentine will pass up his time at bat. I recognize in these games, Bobby may be back to hit later. <laughs> this game, the lineups tend to change. Yeah, I said at the opening there were no significant rule changes in the last hundred years, except for the Upper Deck Heroes game. <laughs> There's Bobby. He's going to sit and watch here for a minute. And the baby bull will take the strike. Orlando Cepeda will take his turn at bat. Bobby will run for him if he gets on. Fidrich knocking his way through it. Two on here. Still got a pretty good cut. Come on now, you got two strikes on him. Don't give up. Don't give him. Just the guy. Two. You got two on him now. You got to get this guy. This is the guy. There's one out here. This is the guy. Two on for Cepeda. That's it. Get two. Get Brooks. two. Get two. You got Gritch. Can they get two? Yes. That's what I'm talking about. That's Brooks what I'm to Gritch. To Boog. 
Well, Fidridge was a rough round enough to know if he could get a ground ball to Brooks, and with Orlando having the bad knees, he'd get the double play. Earl says that's more like it. That's the defense I know. Let's go. That's it. Come on now. You don't know how to do that. That's the man you want. Bob Gibson is going to hit for Lou Brock in the leadoff spot. Gibby wants a whack at Fedrich with a runner at third. Right off the fist. Bumbery deep in the corner. Look at this. Gibson, 333 away, swinging at the pitch. Last pitcher to hit 300 in the major leagues, 1970. He almost went deep. No runs, a couple left on, and the National League heroes lead at one nothing. It came down to Game 7 here at Memorial Stadium in Baltimore. The Orioles had a three games to one lead. Home to finish it out, but the Pirates came to life. Willie Stargell, sixth inning, two-run homer. That provided the go-ahead margin. And in the ninth, high drama. It would be Kent to Colby. Pat Kelly looking for the final out. Fly ball to center field, put it away. We are family. That was the Pittsburgh battle cry, a successful one. And now they're facing each other again here in Baltimore. Sure. Chuck Tanner was the manager on one side and Earl Weaver on the other. Don't forget to announce Frank and Bobby Doerr, okay? Frank and Bobby Doerr. Yeah. Earl making sure his people get looked at as you take a look at the high leg kick. Who else? Juan Marichal, his influence still felt in the game in many ways, but Dennis Eckersley of the Oakland A's says he patterned the high leg kick after his hero, Juan Marichal. Greatest third baseman ever. Not a lot of people arguing about the man Marichal will face who has been given that label, and appropriately so. Brooks Robinson stands in for the home crowd here in Baltimore. You just do not forget the World Series performances of Brooks Robinson. Valentine is back at shortstop, but Parker and Nor Valentine is going to get that one, and Brooks is on. That Bermuda Triangle is a little bigger in these Heroes games than it is during the normal season. When the temperature is in the 90s, you don't do a lot of running, even if you are in good shape like Bobby Valentine. Let that one just fall in. Griffey Sr. is the designated hitter with the Seattle Mariners uniform on, three-time All-Star. 296 lifetime average, 19 years in the major leagues. And son Ken Griffey Jr. made him a proud papa last year. Became the first father-son team to ever be the MVPs in All-Star. Gary Bonds has got a chance to do it. His dad was the MVP in 1973, so we're looking for that tomorrow. I really think there's a chance for a triple crown winner this season. I do too. Bonds is third in hitting, and only Galarraga and Orlando Merced ahead. Barry leading in home runs and RBIs at the All-Star break. Ken Griffey to short. Bobby Valentine. Lopes. Look at these turn two, will you? Over to Garvey. Two double plays in this game. Buck Martinez. By a run now. You need that old famous three-run homer, huh? Who you got up there now? Well, first of all, we got to get two guys on, Buck. But uh, here's Gritch and DeSensei. They're pretty young people, you know, for playing in a game like this. So we still got a chance. If not this inning, when we get to the top of the order again, we're going to be all right. All right, Earl. Thanks a lot. Okay, Buck. And Earl, Earl hadn't had a cigarette yet. Dan Stanhouse must not be around. <laughs> it will be shortly then. Bobby Gritch tags it. Parker, center. Ooh, he wanted to do a little snatch catch there, I thought, for a minute, but he wasn't quite sure he could hang on to it. <laughs> the National League heroes leading the American League heroes 1-0 after 2. Foremost sports um, American icon. Babe Ruth didn't build this house. He was born in it. This temple, you can see his high school jersey. Then move on to the photos which line the walls. You can journey through the Bambino's childhood, and before your eyes, the boy grows into a man. That man grows into a legend. You can sit down for a private screening and thumb through the babe's private scrapbook, seeing not only his arsenal of on-field heroics, but also a different side of the man who made believers out of the world. Watch and listen as the sounds and images surround you. Here's the pitch. Swing on him high and deep to right field. Races back to the fence, but this one is into the seat for a home run. The Yankees take the lead 4 to 2, and for Faye Bruce, home run number 60, breaking his own record at 59. Just listen to this crowd. The legend of 
Babe Ruth is real, and his wondrous feats fill these walls. Throughout the museum, you can see the photos and the plaques commemorating his greatness. But it is his spirit that pervades this house, and his soul that touches its youngest visitors. If the kids go around and, and, uh, and can get a sense that, that uh, yeah, he's the guy that, that um, hit the home run for Johnny Sylvester, who was listening to his radio and, and dying of an undisclosed illness, and, and uh, Babe hit the homer and Johnny got better. If a kid can get that story and understand that, that that's the kind of thing that Babe Ruth did for the game and for children, well, that's the spirit of Babe Ruth. It does not take a trip to the Babe Ruth Museum to understand the legend of Babe Ruth the ball player, but it is worth the trip to understand the legend of George Herman Ruth, the man. Orioles for this All-Star Week here in Baltimore, helping the umpires out, but not a whole lot in this game, to tell you the truth. The world's top golfers will be tackling the most important golf championship in the world. It's the British Open. All the heavyweights will be there, Nick Faldo included, gunning for the title at Royal St. George in Sandwich, Connecticut. Sandwich, Kent. <laughs> they haven't moved it overseas yet. ESPN's coverage Thursday at 9. The early round coverage of the British Open right here on ESPN. Trying to move Connecticut to England. Joe Rudy has come on to play in left field. Bumbry's gone from left to center for Paul Blair. And uh, Scotty McGregor, yet another Oriole on the mound. Scotty McGregor is the guy that made George Brett the second best player on his high school team. Lou Brock back in the ball game. Bumbry falls it in. It's 4-10 out there to center field. That was a pretty good shot by Brock. Wait a minute. Gibson hitting Brock's spot. Now, how do we mark this on our scorecard? Brock. <laughs> Don't even try. Anyway, George Brett said he was the second best player in his El Segundo High School team because got in the record discussed. The bird getting a little fan from the bird. Here we go. <laughs> he never stops smiling. One down, nobody on. And Billy Williams taking his turn here against Scotty McGregor right off the end of the bat. Brooks Robinson. Who saved the baseball, but not the arrow. Brooks will be up here in about five minutes asking if we can erase this. <laughs> Brooks tried to hurry it a little bit too much. Should have known, Brooks. Billy Williams was running. We'll get our first look at Al Oliver. Who's going to come on for Dick Allen. A 1-0 National League lead. Getting their run in the first inning here. The Heroes game, and Oliver, the left-hander, fouls it off. One thing about Ali, you know he's going to hit a rope somewhere. I think he hit ropes when he was seven years old and never stopped. Over 2,700 hits in the career. McGregor misses down low with it. One run, four hits for the National League Heroes. No runs, a couple of hits, and two errors just far for the American League Heroes. The Sensei's, can he do it again? Nope, not going to get to this one. And uh, that'll hold the runners up at first and uh, second base. You know, when Doug's running out there, he's going, his mind is saying, I'm going to get to this ball easily. But the legs don't quite get there. That's what happens in this game, doesn't it? The mind kind of follows along with the body. Steve Garvey, runners at first and second base. Nobody, uh, one out here with McGregor following up for Bob Feller who worked to one batter Palmer an inning Fidrich an inning and McGregor here Garth taking a shot at the warehouse and right a little short a great Dodger infield the Garvey anchored over at first base played together longer than any other in the history of Major League Baseball say Russell Lopes and Garvey eight years Teams too. McGregor, the third. Brooks, look at this. Oh, yeah. Memories are made. One more time. Brooks Robinson. Man 
and won the most gold gloves ever with 16, Brooks Robinson. Buck? All right, Brooksy, you booted one, but you made up for it big time. Yeah, I can catch it, but I have a hard time throwing it now, Buck. If it's right at me, I might have been trying to get out of the way of that one. You know that. All right, it's a great day here. Thank Thanks, you. Nice I appreciate it. Thank you. And we'll be back with more right after this. What do all these police officers have? one nothing here at Camden Yards in Baltimore. As we go to the bottom half of the third inning, we'll get a new battery. There is Gaylord Perry with a uniform with all the teams that he has played for. We'll listen in to him for part of this inning. We put a mic on him. Hey, We're Dave. Ready. I'd really rather be fishing than out here. <laughs> he said he was going to say something to me. And Doug DeSensei's the Baltimore Orioles wants the ball looked at. That's a surprise. What's Fergie doing now? What do you got in there, Gaylord? File, Vaseline. It's kind of been hot, Fergie. How about you? No, I ain't taking my hat off out here. You know, Gaylord's agent approached the Vaseline company one time and they said, how about a contract? And they said, we soothe babies' bottoms, not baseballs. So Gaylord lost an opportunity there. He never met a wet ball he didn't like. 314 wins for this man. Hall of Fame in 1991 for Gaylord Perry. Doug DeSensei fouls it back. Senze is a real favorite here in Baltimore. Played from 73 to 81 with the Orioles. He took over at third base for Brooks Robinson. And can still hit. Base hit center field, Dave Parker. So the Senses is on with a leadoff single here in the third. We told you guys love to collect autographs. Let's Joe Carter, the current all-star, and Bob Feller. His autograph, he is secure. <laughs> this game does live on its great history and its legends. Al Rod Hendricks fouls it off. Bert Campanaris has come out as the pinch runner at first base for Doug DeSensen. See the numbers on Campy. Al Rod, we told you, has worn the Oriole uniform longer than anybody else since they moved here in 1954. Baltimore Orioles coach talking to Gaylord Perry. Great part of this hero's part of All-Star Week has been the Negro League players who have been recognized, and they too had autographs being collected before this game. What was that pitch? Bottom fell out of it. Seen that before. I think he was laughing because it still works. <laughs> Gets by Daryl Porter, who's come in to do the catching for Manny Sanguian. Doesn't count as a pass ball when Gaylord throws it because it jumps all over the place. Too difficult to handle. All right. Runner on at second base, Bert Campanaris now. The National League girls leading it here 1 nothing. I'm not sure who enjoys hero games more, those of us who are real fans and it's such a treat out of seeing these players again or the players themselves each year it never ceases to amaze me the time that these players have with one another and how much they enjoy it last night at the dinner they had a lot of them stayed around after just sitting around telling stories Yogi and Brooks Tom Selleck was on hand Elrod good shot to right here comes Campanaris he's still flying Big still run. Hat flew off. Campy said they put me in to pinch run. That's my job. 
Campy got one of the great compliments I think I've ever heard about in baseball. When he got ready to retire, umpire Bill Haller walked over to him and shook his hand and said, you have been a true professional. Never griped, never complained, just showed up every day and did his job. That's his exercise for the day right there. Huh? We're Capinaris. And this is a tie game now. The American League has picked up four hits for their hero, Zell Bumbry. He grounded out his first time up against Gaylord Perry. With a runner on at first here. And nobody out. Packed a lot of folks in here for this one. Hard foul ball down the line and left. A lot of white shirts on hand on a 90 plus degree day, but not as uncomfortable as it has been over the past two or three days all on the East Coast. Al Bumbry, 54 career home runs, gets a base hit to right. Hendricks will move down to second base. And they're going to try and take the extra on Billy Williams. And they do. So credit Bumbry with a couple. This year's most valuable blimp, the MVB, the Bud One Airship, bringing you the pictures from overhead, 1,000 feet above Camden Yards. Mike Hans, Tony Stevenson working as the pilots, George Shinasma working on the camera. And what a day for them to be flying overhead. This will be the first at bat for Joe Rudy. A couple on here against Gaylord Perry. 1-1. One, one. Tag to left field. Brock back. Rudy. Goodbye. Three-run homer. I tell you, that was an honest home run right there. Well, Gary, now that Rudy's gone deep, I wonder if Gaylord will decide Reggie should bite the dust for the second time today. And there he goes. I want to get you. All right, fellas. Joe Rudy sends Gaylord Perry to the back of the bench. Cuban fork ball he hit. <laughs> so Gaylord's going to come out. Reggie's waiting to stand in again here, and it's going to be Ferguson Jenkins coming to the mound. Fergie Hall of Famer. 71 Cy Young Award winner, 125 with Texas, had those great years with the Chicago Cubs. You notice Gaylord knocked down Reggie in the on-deck circle before he even walked up to the plate. In the on-deck circle. Mm. I'm going to look at one. I'm going to look at one. Sure. <laughs> Especially if it's fat, I'm going to look at one over the warehouse. Cy Young Award winner in 1971, Ferguson Jenkins. 24 and 13 of that season. The Hall of Famer ready to work. To the Hall of Famer is going in this season. Reggie Jackson alone. The players, Chuck Thompson in the broadcast wing of the Hall of Fame. Every time you see Reggie at an All-Star week, you think back of that prodigious home run he hit in Detroit in 1971. Oh, Doc Ellis, what a blast. He was going for one right there. Evans going back to haul that one in. And uh, that'll take care of Reggie here. And with the bases empty, it's going to be the first out of the inning. See all the media people on hand. Who for the Heroes game get to cover it up close. Bill Buckner will be the pinch hitter for Boog Powell. Taking on Ferguson Jenkins here in a 4-1 game now with the American League Heroes on top. Free run homer by Joe Rudy to right. Williams is there to haul it in. Buckner is retired. Brooks Robinson will get another chance at the plate. Boy, he did pick one in the field to end the inning. for Porter. 
No. Ends up on top of the dugout. Darrell said discretion is the better part of Valor on this one. Nobody's going to go sliding into the dugout here in this game to catch the foul pop up. Brooks Robinson put on the greatest defensive show in World Series history here with the Baltimore Orioles. Holds nearly every lifetime record for a third baseman here in Baltimore. And the 70 World Series is the one where he wrapped up the title as the greatest ever at third base in many people's minds. And he's on with a base hit. Well, Brooks, speed was never one of your strong points. <laughs> Harmon Gillibrew giving him congratulations. Here's Ken Griffey Sr. Seven hits now have been put up by the American League heroes. Griffey getting his first look at Ferguson Jenkins with Brooks Robinson on at first base. Fergie nine times in the career through 270 or more innings. They don't do that anymore. Williams. And not an easy play. Hauls it in, but Joe Rudy. The three-run homer here in the third. Part of four runs put up. 4-1, the American League on top. Let's face it. If you don't stand on the podium at Cooperstown, then you would not considered a full ball player. When you're growing up, you always say, well, I'm going to be a big league baseball player. But when you think of the Hall of Fame, I mean, that is so far out. It means the highest honor that can be bestowed upon a baseball player. Cooperstown is a very special place. It's a beautiful little village, you know. You're a little kid. You have to be completely in awe of, uh, of Cooperstown. I've been a member of the Hall of Fame since 1982. <laughs> Probably one of the greatest thrills I had in life. I've been American Express card member uh, since 1986. Since 1989. Since 1973. Since 1988. I like my harmonica. I never leave home without it. <laughs> the big D, Don Drysdale, who's passed away, the Los Angeles Dodger pitcher, and Roy Campanella, two greats who touched a lot of lives. These are two men that just love what they did. They love the game and they transfer that to me and it's just really wonderful to love what you're doing and to be around Roy Campanella and Don Drysdale really inspired my life. Now, good league on top of the National League heroes. We've got some changes to be made here. Bert Campanaris scored one of those runs, stays in at shortstop. Over at first base, Bill Buckner, who came on to hit, will stay. He's wearing the Angels uniform, as you see, at first Buckner. The game's tenacious catchers, Gene Tennis, go behind the plate. Raleigh Fingers will do the pitcher. Dave Parker's the man who's going to stand in against him. Boy, he wanted one. He may have one. Reggie at the wall, jumping. No, goodbye. Home run. Dave Parker, the Cobra's got one. Probably can go to a commercial break while Dave takes his trot. He has one of the slower trots in baseball history, but he enjoys it. He was aiming for that warehouse out there in Wright, I'll tell you, and he, that's about 375 feet away where he put that ball out. National League MVP, back-to-back -back batting champions. He gets a good pitch and doesn't miss it. 339 career home runs. 290 batting average and Dave Parker off Raleigh Fingers. Evans to first. Buckner, nice play to Fingers covering. I don't even want to know what you New York Mets fans are thinking right now. Well, he caught that one. Buck. All right, Gary, we're with Lou Brock. Lou, it's a great day for all the ball players, but tell us what this game means to former ball players. Well, of course, the game is played on behalf of former players who are down on their luck. Uh, many players who cannot make ends meet, and it's one of the black eyes of baseball, that baseball and the players. Some of the corporate sponsors, particularly all of the upper deck, have gotten together to do something about it. Well, it's a great day, and I know it's been a huge success. Thanks a lot, Lou Brock. Thank you. All right, fellas, back up to you. Right, thank you. Grounded back to first this time by Daryl Porter. 
Not going to get him. Grounded to the mound, but Polly Fingers couldn't make the play. The whole st all, uh, star on the mound there had it bounce off the glove. So a runner on at first base with Davey Lopes. Schedule up. Bobby Valentine will take his first whack at it here. Valentine has been playing out in the field, but has not been to the plate. Souvenir. The baseball assistance team bat that Lou Brocker is referring to proceeds from the upper deck heroes games that are played in every ballpark throughout the season. Go to members of baseball's family, former players, widows, and others who have been involved in baseball who are down and out and need assistance. And uh, that is in large part what these heroes games are all about and why many of these players participate. Valentine put that one out the left center. It is Bumbry. will haul it in. And there are two down. This is going to be the last inning here, and we're in the fourth. American League leading at 4 2. Davy Bull sitting next to Gaylord Perry. And on the other side, you see great time for these players. Have a chance to meet and talk with one another. Orlando Cepeda uh, and Lou Brock is up. He's hitting three sections of this lineup in four innings. Not bad. <laughs> He's done all right. Mm, big time cut for Lewis. Did you pull a rib cage muscle? No, nah, those guys didn't do it. That's a modern injury. Even if they did, they'd stay there. Even now. Lou Brock, one of the real classy gentlemen in baseball's history. Rich makes the flip to Capitaris. They get the force out. We've got a half inning left to go in our Heroes game from Baltimore. American League leading at 4-2. Ricky Henderson on the field. Every guy on the field could hit 300 or better. Every guy on the field could steal as many as 50 bases a year. Every guy on the field could hit as many as 20 or 25 home runs a year. Well, we are delighted to be part of it with them here on ESPN with the final half inning coming up. American League leading at 4-2 and what a treat last night to sit at the table with those all-star players from the Negro Leagues. I'll tell you, you talk about you some men who are in families who are having a wonderful time. It was magnificent to listen to their stories about playing in the barnstorming days against Babe Ruth and the likes when they were playing in the Negro Leagues. What a treat. Bobby Gritch. Bobby Valentine. It's a long way over there these days. Probably saying that Cal Ripken never has any trouble on this field. That ball came up on me. They got to give him a hit, right? Nah, uh, E6. Bert Campanaris to stand uh, in against Ferguson Jenkins. Sports Center coming along next here on ESPN. We certainly hope you have enjoyed the festivities here on ESPN as far, part of this all star gala from Baltimore. I'll tell you, this city just alive everything that's going on in this city right now somehow some way is connected to hey, yo. the all-star week Bert Campanaris hey, yo. rips it down the line in left field Manny Sanguian who's gone out to play there cuts it off if I hit? no he hasn't well Weaver's got his two guys on for his famous three-run homer theory it would... oh I don't want that you know Earl he'd like to add a little bit more to the score okay Got the shot at it right here. Gene Tennis. Gibson must have pull in, huh? Big, being a big guy. For the skipper. Against Ferguson Jenkins. Ferguson's still throwing pretty good. Okay, okay. I'll be in the locker room having a butt wipe. Tennis fouls it off off Jenkins. 4-2. American League Heroes leading it here over the National League. Joe Rudy putting up the big three-run homer in the ball game. Dave Parker put one out. A little reach of Reggie Jackson earlier on the other side. Tennis 241. Career average. Looks Robinson sitting in watching off the end of the bat. Oh, I know that. Evans. I know that. Evans. 
Puts it away, and there's one away. We're going to get a chance to see right now one of the great hitters who's home in the younger years is Baltimore, L.K. Line. Played, of course, for the Detroit Tigers, 53 to 74, 16 All Star games, 399 home runs, ninth on the all time list. Games played 2,834 in the Hall of Famer in 1980. Bryce loved that 399 that K line hit. He really hit 402, but three of them got rained out by the fifth inning. So this man hit over 400 home runs. Go, boy. 22 seasons with the Detroit Tigers. Eddie Lopes. K line is retired, and uh, we've got one out left to go here in our Heroes game. There are some of the All-Stars who are out watching. Wade Boggs, Tony Palmer right there, who's worked here in this game. All smiles. Frank Robinson up behind them watching. Chance, yes, get the force out, and that's going to do it. The upper deck. Heroes Classic here in Baltimore has been won by the American League heroes over the National League heroes. 4-2, Joe Rudy, three-run homer and a standing ovation from the Baltimore fans. We'll be right back.